Today we're talking about the housing market. Is there going to be a housing rollover, a housing continuing to collapse, or is there going to be QE4? But before we get into that chart, I want to talk about this real quickly. Look what happened during the QE time. Ben Bernanke, <clears throat> Ben Bernanke making, printing all that fake money, and all the rich people got the money and they bought up all the foreclosures. But look at the look at the work. No, nope, everybody's still out of a job, meaning all these people dropped out of the market. So the labor, believe it or not, what this chart tells you is there's now 94 million people who are not even in the labor force. So as the criminals at the Federal Reserve print money and they hand it off to their friends and of course their friends buy stocks and they buy uh, hedge funds who invest in all the foreclosures so they buy up all that stuff but still no jobs you see still 94 million people or actually it wasn't 94 million here it's 94 million down here up here I don't know it might have been 90 million but slowly the people who drop out of the job market just keep on getting bigger and bigger the numbers. See, as the chart goes down, that means more people out of the labor market. As this QE goes up, that means more money, more fake money into the hands of the criminals or the rich. So I just wanted to show you how this, this chart tells you that QE does not work for creating jobs. The only thing that QE does is give money to the rich people who would actually went broke. All the people who invested in banks, they'd all be broke today, and they'd be all jumping out of windows. So all this QE is, is to save the rich people. QE does not do anything to help the working people. And this chart shows it clearly, is night and day. But let's go on to now, let's go on to something, what I was talking about, what I want to talk about, and that's the housing market. Collapse, or will there be QE4? We, we got a chart of the housing. Now remember... Back in 1994, <clears throat> housing prices were relatively correct, meaning compared to what people were making, their paycheck was making. So you got to realize it was even better back in the 1980s and the 1960s and 70s, it was even better. But it did go up a little bit, <clears throat> and I even thought back here in 1994, I thought housing was way too high back here. Little did I know that what, look what happened here during 1997 all the way up to 2007 look at this is insanity this it's insanity chart of course the housing market the bubble housing bubble collapsed here so what you're looking at here is from like 95 to 2006 and then there was a housing bubble collapse in 07 and that's what ha what you're looking at here now you're saying how you, remember you got to understand that back in 1994 if you're 21 years old today, back in 1994, a 21-year-old would be just being born right here. So there's a whole generation of people who were like babies and in high school when this happened, during this whole thing. And they're, they're, they're kind of confused. I don't think they really understand what happened. They definitely don't understand what happened before here. See, before, before 1994, they weren't even born. So don't, they don't even realize what a normal housing market looks like back in the 70s and 80s. They don't even know, the, the, the younger generation doesn't even know what it looks like. They're still being brainwashed by the government that uh, housing is an investment. Housing has to go up and up and up and up or up. No, a house is for you to live in. It's not an investment. Sure, there are some special people out there, some very, very special, talented people who can take a look at an old house and say, hey, you know what, I can fix that house up and I can sell it for a profit. These are very special people. They're very talented people. They know how to work with a hammer and a nail and a paintbrush. Very few people in America know how to do this today, but don't think you're in that class of that type of person. I'm not talking about flippers either. Flippers can go to hell. For all I care. No, I'm talking about a person, there are very, like I said, very, very few people who look at an old house. They say, you know what, I can do the work myself. I can do all the plumbing, the electrical, the paint. I can do it all myself and make a little profit on that house. There are people out there like that, not very many. I'm, I'm assuming that you're not one of them.
Okay, so right now I'm just talking to normal people. If you're a flipper, you're going to get crushed. Okay, so here's what's happening. This is the bubble. What happened is, say like Las Vegas, they actually, the realtors would actually go out into the uh, parks where the homeless people were. And they would grab homeless people and talk them into buying four or five houses. And every time that homeless person buy, bought a house, the homeless person would say he made 500000 The banks would give him a house on, on his signature. The realtors made big, big money all the way up to here. And then when the housing collapsed, you never seen so many, you never heard so many realtors cry in the blues when I, this happened here. This right here, this bubble collapse, I never heard so many realtors crying. And now what happened? QE1, QE3, QE2, QE3, this is what happened. So instead of this keep on going way, way down here where it should be, the Federal Reserve jumped in and said, no, we can't have that. We're going we're gonna to spend a trillion dollars by all the mortgage-backed securities. We're going to have QE1, QE2, QE3. This is what happened. Now, this is, we're going to make this very, very simple, very, very quick. This is where we're at. Some people call it an echo bubble. Call it what you want. All this is right here is QE1, QE2, QE3, looking like it saved the day. Unfortunately, this won't end well. If the QE stops, this is going to come down again. We're going to have to come down to levels like back here before 1988. This chart has to come all the way down if we're in a real market. The only way this can keep on going up, I'm going to show you, this can go up. And you know, I'll tell you how it's going to go up, QE4. So even though I know this chart should be collapsing all the way down to here, this in a real world, this chart should have collapsed all the way down to here. But I know QE1 stopped it in its tracks. Instead of this chart going all the way down and housing collapsing totally, QE1 stopped it. QE2 kept it going. QE3 moved it up a little bit. And now for this to continue to go up, you're going to have to see QE4. And you know what? Quite frankly, that's probably going to happen. The people in charge are cowards. They don't want to see housing come down here to levels that my grandfather and my father had. My father bought a house for $7,000. He paid it off within five years. The people who are 21 years old today couldn't even imagine that. And there was at least, there was, there was over 10 acres that went with the property. So for a 21 year old to even imagine this is insane. Think about that. You buy a house with over 10 acres for $7,000 and you pay it off in five years. So it's not the money, the, it's not the $7,000 price that's important here. It's paying it off within five years, meaning his income. My old man's income was enough to pay off his house in five years after he put down about 50% down. That's what this has to come back down to. And if this chart would have, would have allowed to come down to here, all the 21-year-olds today would be able to buy houses but because of what the Q, what, because of what the Federal Reserve done with QE1, QE2, QE3, the 21-year-olds will never be able to buy a house. 30-year-olds won't even be able to buy a house because what this is going to pop back up with QE4, QE5, QE6, QE7. It's going to keep on going up, and it's like Peter Schiff said. I like Peter Schiff's analogy. These QEs are going to be like the Rocky movies. You're going to, you're going to, like Rocky 5, Rocky 6, you're going to see QE4, QE5, QE6. I like that. Peter Schiff is really a funny guy. I think you ought to listen to him more often. But, and Peter Schiff, believe it or not, he saw this coming. When we were going up all this time that the housing prices were going up here, Peter Schiff was out there preaching to the world, this is a housing bubble. Remember, this whole time here, they're laughing at a guy named Peter Schiff. They're laughing at him. When the bubble collapsed in 2007, 2008, they were no longer laughing at him. I never saw so many realtors crying the blues at this point. And they would have been completely knocked out on the canvas if, it would have, if, if nature would have just let it go down to here. All the realtors would have been knocked down on the canvas, but actually Federal Reserve jumped in with QE1, QE2, QE3. So I'm not going to go into this anymore. I'm beating the dead horse. If you didn't get it after this, if you don't understand what I just said, you'll probably never get it.